you brought up the Great Reset, and that's something I want to talk did. about here as well. Russia, <clears throat> Russia, Let's do it. Russia, 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 Russia. We need a Great Reset. Learn to use the dark side of the force. We are Yes, this was a clip um, that was, you know, I was tr- strolling, strolling down CNN lane, which I love to do, um, and seriously can't help myself at this point. It is an addictive thing, uh, so don't don't mess around with CNN, kids. It'll fry <laughs> your brain, and you'll never get off the stuff. Uh, but they had uh, an interview here with ret- uh, a retired general who came in to talk about what's going on. It was uh, retired General Wesley Clark. Mm-hmm. Ever heard of him, Gons? Mm. Uh, we're talking about the Wesley Clark 7, and uh, he had some f- uh, some fun things to say about Russia. And again, keep in mind, CNN is pretty much the most... Uh, <laughs> the most transparent know, we- Intel uh, news yes, platform. The most, the most well-funded um, conspiracy theory outlet, as well as uh, <laughs> intelligence, uh, you know, the U.S. intelligence outlet as well. Um, so go ahead and uh, play, roll that beautiful bean footage, baby. General, what should we be reading into U.S. intelligence that's telling us that Russia is shifting its focus to having this victory in early May? Uh, You know, if Russia takes control of parts of Ukraine, would Putin just stop there? Wouldn't he want more? Oh, he's going to—the goal is not any different. He published what he wanted um, back in uh, December. He wants Ukraine. Will you pause it real quick? He wants the Baltic. Yeah. What kind of question is that for an anchor to ask? Well, it's a yeah, it's a, hey, it's a so setup. Of course, it's, if, it's if CNN. Putin, if, excuse me, if Putin gets what he wants, won't he just want more, General? <laughs> what the heck kind of question well, is that? Yeah. Okay, all right, give us give us the talking points, General. He published what he wanted um, back in uh, December. He wants Ukraine. He wants the Baltic states. He wants control over Eastern Europe. He wants to shatter NATO, and he wants the United States out. Uh, this is for all the marbles. Uh, all he's trying to do right now is, is stall. He'd like to stall Western reinforcement of Ukraine. He'd like to have us emotionally, morally disarmed to think that's all he wants. Uh, but it isn't. So he wants to disrupt the international system. And with him is China in this. Hold on. Didn't they, isn't the Biden <laughs> sanction would disrupt? I mean, yes, the, the invasion of I'm Russia. So but, glad you caught that. But yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. He wants to disrupt the international system. Yeah. Okay. So if that is what he wants, then what you're saying, General Wesley Clark, is that Biden fell directly into the, <laughs> the trap. Putin trap. <laughs> Why are we doing what we're? I mean, all the sanctions, the, uh, the all, pretty much the only set of actions that Biden has taken uh, against Putin in response, by the way, not not on his own, in response to Putin's movement in Ukraine was to pull the sanctions, convince everybody else to pull the sanctions, talk to all the other international leaders, make everybody else obey the sanctions. That's what's disrupted the international economic order it wasn't putin and if putin (laughs) wanted if putin did all of this as a trap to lure biden into uh, destroying the current economic world order then what does that say about our president (laughs) it he did exactly what putin wanted so uh i think this is whether or not that is the case it very well could have been the case i mean putin's not a dumb guy if you believe people like well this retired general and everybody else (laughs) sort of trying to simultaneously convince us that he's a madman with a brain tumor and a narcissistic personality disorder or some sort of genius who is single-handedly destroying you know a a hundred years worth of new world order economic oh uh, sounds sounds familiar a familiar dichotomy there 
Uh huh. Mm. Exactly. Somehow he's doing both, and uh, we fell right into his trap. And th- Biden just uh, is taken by surprise. He had no idea that this was going to disrupt the entire economic world order. Okay, c- continue. It's the it's the Trump Putin. China's uh, <laughs> on the sidelines, maybe, but rooting for him. China's looking at Taiwan. China wants to assert itself. So uh, China and Russia have teamed up on this. Ukraine mm, is no. just the current battlefield. But mm-hmm. if the Ukrainians defeat Russia on this battlefield, everything changes. So the best way Does to protect it? NATO, the okay, best yeah, way to pause protect... Pause it real quick. <laughs> Does it really? What, what, what do you mean Ukraine defeats Russia on this battlefield? Over and over and over, the, the uh, corporate news has told us, you know, there's just no way Ukraine could win this war on their own. There's there's no way P- Putin's army is 10 times bigger than what he's uh, <clears throat> sent in there so far. He has the biggest guns, the fanciest drones. Ukraine doesn't stand a chance. We must go in and help them. And uh, this imaginary situation where General Wesley Clark is talking about, you know, Ukraine must defeat Russia on this battlefield and they will save the world. Well, sounds like a great reason for the U.S. to get involved, doesn't it? Mm. Cool, 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 cool. So the best way to protect NATO, the best way to protect the international system is to give Ukraine the assistance it says it needs and let them handle Russia on this battlefield. You know, what's mm-hmm. fascinating about this, and this is partly why we're talking about this as the new world order, um, <clears throat> is that I, I I realized last night as I was kind of putting this show together that I feel like, and we've talked about some of this before, like the different party system in the, in the world order being similar mm-hmm. to like a Republican Democrat thing. If you look at the history of the U.S. and how we split up into two parties, we had like the the Constitution, we had you know the Bill of Rights, seventeen seventy six, that whole deal. I think it's within like mm. twenty years or something. They we, they started arguing about how much power should the government have, and how should that you know power be distributed, and it split off into two parties, right? Um, and you know, there's more to, there's more detail to that, obviously, but just kind of a rundown. And I feel like that's what's happening here. We, we have all agreed to, for this globalism, this world order, we have all agreed to do it with the U S dollar. Here we are, we have done it. And then now there's disagreements mm-hmm. about how to do it. And that's why I think we're hearing everybody call for a new world order. Ever since this whole yeah. thing happened, I have a screenshot here of 12 articles uh, just doing a new world order search, you know, just phrase new world order. And yeah. I tallied it and this. This is what this was about. I know you were like, what is this thing with the notes? But basically out of the 12, there's four headlines that say how Russia and China are trying to build a world order, new world order and democratic world order. There's four articles about the U S and Biden saying, Oh, Biden's talking about a new world order. What's he talking about? The Washington times even has cold war two and Biden's new new world order which is something we've talked about in the past as well. And then there's four others that are more neutral. So it's kind of like every, it's all, it's like the, the race is on the game is on, you know, uh, speaking of the new world battle for the new world. Uh, Right. I'm I'm, seriously though, like right as we're launching the new world order fantasy league, you know, that we're going to probably do in the next few uh, weeks here, the real, like real life game of chess, whatever in the global stage is beginning as well. So I thought that was really fascinating. It's the big game, baby. The the big big game game is starting. It's starting. We're ready for it. And there's one country that I want to focus in on just to wrap up this little segment here. And that is Israel because it has a lot to do with, uh, eschatology, the Bible, you know, stuff happened in Israel that has to do with the Bible. Did you know this Basil? I don't know if you knew this. I I would have no way of knowing. (laughs) Uh, The article (laughs) is written by, it's an opinion piece written by Philip Pilkington for, for Newsweek. And the headline is Israel in the new multipolar world order. Everyone's using the same phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, we were coming out of a unipolar system, the U.S. dollar. We're going into multipolar. Mm -hmm. Over the past few weeks, it has become impossible to deny the rapid emergence of a multipolar world. This trend has been in the pipeline for some time, but the invasion of Ukraine by Russia allows us to apply Hemingway's adage about going broke. The multipolar world emerged gradually, then suddenly. 
Yes. Ooh. What this means for the world is unclear, but expect a lot of change. Coinc- <laughs> Coincidentally, that's what they say about uh, falling in love and falling asleep, Gone. Yeah, it happens true. slowly <laughs> and then all at once. True. What this means for the world is unclear, but expect a lot of change in the coming decade. By the end of the 2020s, the world is unlikely to look anything like it did at the beginning. The Russian invasion of Ukraine and the apparent coordination between Russia and China in its wake seem likely to instigate lasting changes in the geopolitical and economic world order on a magnitude not seen since the Second World War. Similar language uh, with the whole New World Order conversation. One country that will want to pay close, I'm sorry, one country that will want to pay close attention is Israel. Since the end of the short Yom Kippur War in 1973, Israel's fate has been tied to the dominance of the United States. In recent years, this relationship has weakened somewhat, but it remains Israel's de facto fallback. The problem for Israel is simple enough. Iran is a major power in the region, both historically and in terms of sheer size in the Islamic Republic uh, and the Re- Islamic Republic makes no secret that it does not recognize Israel's, Israel's legitimacy. Israel's le- relationship with the U.S. has ensured that Iran has been contained. This was mainly accomplished through harsh economic sanctions that kept the Iranian economy weak and until now dissuaded Iran from pursuing nuclear weapons. Oh, sorry, a uh, continue thing here. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. American-led sanctions do not look nearly as convincing today as they did before the Russian invasion. However, Russia and China have responded to them by stitching together a variety of measures that not only allow Russia to function within the sanctions, but seek to build a rival economic system to the Western one. If Russia and China succeed, they could quite easily alleviate the burden on the Iranian economy by bringing it into the fold. This would render American sanctions much much less effect American sanctions much less effective tool as a tool to contain the country. What are Israel's possible responses to this scenario? The most obvious is diplomacy. Israel has run hot and cold during the Russian invasion, which is true. Have you noticed they're kind of like they're not really taking a stance on the Russia thing. They've been very accommodating to some Russian oligarchs, but also right. not being fully, you know, not fully unbacking Ukraine, you know, they've been sort of tone uh, beaten around the bush. Israel has good relations with Russia and China. If and when the new world order emerges, Israel will no doubt use these relations to make clear its problems with Iran. But Russia and China also have good rela- relations with Iran. The best Israel can hope for out of this diplomacy would be for Russia and China to mediate an arrangement in the Middle East that is somewhat stable. In Israel's worst case scenario, the new emerging order would simply unleash Iran and make it Russia and China's main partner in the region. Um, I won't go on here because we're a little short on time, but it is interesting. The U.S. being the former power of the unipolar world system and uh, breaking apart into a multipolar world, Israel stuck in in that middle ground kind of, you know, where, Hey, the world powers are shifting a little bit. Do we stick with the U S do we, or do we hop on this wagon over here? This new shiny wagon, uh, that the, the China and, and Russia are putting together. And I mean, it's kind of a smart play, honestly. I know. I know. Especially because of the Iran situation, right? Like it it makes like it it or agree with it or whatever. But as far as you know, their own, national well interests being, are yeah. concerned yeah it might be the smartest thing to, to sit back for a second <laughs> just to not. wait for a moment and yeah. I'm, just to tie a bow on this with uh, the eschatological views um i always recommend this book but i think it's just so well uh, written false christ will the antichrist claim to be the jewish messiah by chris white and of course he argues that the antichrist as the scriptures describe him will be a sort of uh, fake messianic fulfillment that the Jews have been waiting for. They've been waiting for this, this conquering Messiah to defend Israel and restore Israel. And so Mm -hmm. in that regard, uh, you look at, and and Chris does a great job of tying mystery Babylon uh, to uh, eschatological Jerusalem, like the end time city of Jerusalem. And it talks about the city or the, the harlot fornicating with the Kings of the world and you look at what the Israel situation, and it's very fascinating because it's like, oh, you've been fornicating with the U.S. for a while now. Are you going to go fornicate? Are you going to go cheat on the U.S.? Are you going to go uh, mm. hang out with Russia right. and China because it's new shiny, right. you know, the the, the new whatever? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting parallel with everything going on that even even with all these changes, there's a, a context to be had with uh, Bible prophecy. 
Yeah, indeed. And uh, yeah, I mean, what other option would there be? Of course, of it course, is. Of course, of course. Yeah, especially yeah. Israel, right? I mean, there's. 